Get my two little tripods angled here correctly. <sighs> there we go. Here we are. You know when you think you don't have time to say a thing, you probably are not correct about that, firstly. And secondly, give it over to God. Stop concerning yourself with the things, you know? Life is a lot easier if you just say yes and keep press and play on the thing that is being shown to you in that moment. Now, I have two tripods going on here, you guys. Larissa, I was going to message you this morning. Have you returned? Is it time for our burgers and margaritas again? I'm ready for the stories. I'm ready for the stories, y'all. We're going to talk about purpose, identity, and destiny in God for a little minute or three. Probably about 20 of them. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my... Facebook angle and my IG angle is correct. She's back. Okay. Y'all. A little bit of coffee. Can I just tell you a truth about business? About content creation? About entrepreneurialism? About the online world? About being the messenger who God ordained you to be? If that's you and if it's not... I don't know why you're here, but I presume the Lord has a reason, so we'll find out. It is so much easier if you just say yes to the flow that God is leading you on now. Do you know that a huge chunk of the reason of why you are, sorry, but off path, if you're off path, let me not be presumptuous, or, or let's say it in a nicer way or a better way or probably more accurate way even, a huge chunk of the reason why there's this continual sort of somewhat hold up in you just alignedly moving forward with flow, with purpose, with certainty, graced in whatever you should be moving forward with as a messenger, as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as a creator, as somebody who is here to impact people with the gifts that they've been given. And also, no doubt, as somebody who has awesome, big dreaming, you know, visions for their business, their ministry, their life. One of the big holdups is the fact that you think you have to figure stuff out and like know everything that is going to come or have some kind of clear, succinct, elevator pitch-esque, internet approved explanation of what you're going to do or what you're going to do next. When in actual fact for a lot of you, and I believe for all of us, at least a huge percentage of the time, what we should be doing is just saying yes to the flow that God has put upon our hearts right now. You know, right now I'm in this stage in my business, my ministry, my life where I'm like, I don't know who I am again. I've got my ministry, Katrina Ruth Ministries. I'm live on two phones at the moment right now. So I'm live on my personal Facebook here. Hi, you might watch this replay on YouTube. You might listen to it on my podcast. We make it easy. We just leverage the content, you guys. Strip the audio, there's your podcast. There you go. I forget I even have a podcast. And then people tell me that they love my podcast. I'm like, what podcast? I'm like, oh, that's right. Rach takes the audio off of my live streams and puts them on the podcast. I recommend it. And then I'm live on my Katrina Ruth Instagram page over here. And I have my other Instagram page as well, which I recently revived, the Katrina Ruth Show, which is more like business, leadership, entrepreneurialism. But of course it all meshes together because I don't know if you know anything about yourself, but one thing you probably know about yourself, I don't know everything about myself. I don't, sometimes I think I know absolutely nothing about myself, but I do know this, that whatever I say or whatever I share or whatever I'm meant to impart to the world today through my business, through my ministry, through my words, um, it's going to all mesh together and it's not going to be effective for me to try and segment it or compartmentalize it or try and say like, this is about this, this is about this, this is only about this. I try and teach something on biz strategy, next minute we're like ripping identity stuff open, you guys. Um, now I'm not gonna even presume to know that I know how to say your name properly. Shawakni, I'm sorry, I probably horribly just brutalized that. You could let me know. But she says, I'm so glad I'm catching you live. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for saying that. So, <coughs> excuse me. I've had this like cough for a little bit. Thank you, Lord, that I am healed. So I'm in this state in my human mind, in my flesh, where I'm like, I don't even know who you want me to be right now, Lord. I got it. That was definitely the Holy Spirit, not me. I'm amazed. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I don't know who you want me to be, God. Like, am I in biz leadership? Am I calling forth the unapologetically extra too much woman who can't stop, won't stop? Yes and amen. 
Am I a prophet of the Lord? I am. He told me. He appointed me. There was a whole thing around that. That was not an overnight situation, my friends. Am I, am I writing a new prophetic book because Jesus came to me in a vision on Friday night and took me into a place and showed me a thing and then told me the exact title and tagline of the book and so now I've started writing it obediently? Yes, I am. Am I also teaching a course called Supernatural Creator Academy, which is very much about the supernatural unfolding and flow of your message, who you are, and the can't stop, won't stop, just keeps you know, moving and flowing, and it's, it's making more money unapologetically. That's what it's about, by being all the way extra you and doing the work that you're finally here for. Am I doing that? Is that like, does that make sense with my ministry's work, God? Am I meant to be doing that? Am I, am I confusing people? Am I confusing myself? Am I in my own will or way or ideas? Am I just making new things up each day? And it's that, this is where my mind goes, right? That's what I'm sharing with you. So what do we do? What do we do when God has put a big call upon our lives and we know, we know that he has a destiny path for us to follow? Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, he says, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans for hope and a future. Such a great scripture, such a go-to. What about in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 through 3? Write the vision and make it plain so that he or she who reads it may run with it. And though it might tarry, it will not tarry, which basically means though it might get held up, don't worry, it won't get held up. This is not contradictory. This is the Lord reminding us that his ways are higher. For Isaiah, his thoughts are higher, his imagination is higher, and it will happen in his timing. So he tells us to write the vision and make it plain. He calls us to actually pester him in Isaiah about his previous promises. He tells us to possess the land. He shows us in scripture that as far as what we can see is what we have authority over. So if you want to walk forward more in the authority that God has given you, just start seeing more. Ask him to show you supernatural eyes to see. Right? So, so what about me or you and any of the women that I'm here for and, and the men that I'm here for as well? What if I'm seeing this and then this and then this and then this? I'm like, I'm seeing a lot, Lord. I feel like it's conflicting. Is it right? Is it me? What do I do? I know I'm here for the too much woman. Danielle says you're for the chaotic woman who knows she knows. Amen. Amen, right? You know what's true about the too much woman, the unapologetically extra woman, the woman who just sees more, who discerns, who's always had you know, an interaction with the spirit realm who's maybe, like me, made that really bad or wrong or worried about it, who's maybe, like me, inadvertently wandered so far down the slippery slope of witchcraft and Lord knows what, um, beyond what she even thought was ever possible or even thought that she would have wanted to or who's done it on purpose. Either way, you know what's true about women like us who see so much and we know so much and we don't, it's not an ego thing to say we know so much. I mean, I, I did the whole narcissistic online multi-seven-figure queen thing. I have plenty of T-shirts from that era. They're upstairs in my dressing room. <laughs> Came in on the words witchcraft, like Asia says. Right, and turn for the party. Right, so, so we did that, or speak for ourselves, I suppose, but I definitely did that. I definitely did that. I have all the unfortunate Facebook memories to prove it. Thank you, Lord, for the continual reminder of my redemption. <laughs> Um, and some interesting outfits. So I got rid of most of them. I got some interesting outfits upstairs. You know what's true about the too much woman? Maybe the enemy is the number one offender who tears us apart. Uh, that, that's true. But you know who's the number one human offender who tears us apart? Usually ourselves. 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 We are the ones typically who will... Shame and condemn ourselves where there's really no good rhyme or reason and it's just not even our place to be doing so a lot of the time. We are the ones who will fire up and flow forward with certainty because we were caught up in the, you know, the flow or the anointing or the thing that the Lord put upon us and maybe we're in the secret place and we got the download and we got the vision and it was freaking plain and then we started to write it down so that anyone who would read it could run with it and the next minute we woke up the next day and we were like "Ooh, that's probably me i probably made it up it's probably too much oh what is my pastor gonna think what is my you know godly mentor or friend gonna think what is what are, what are all my clients gonna think what do i even think i don't even know what i think right and so we do that and we go, ah you know what i'm gonna do I will write a new vision and make it plain so that he or she who reads it can run with it. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to dig in. I'm going to extricate the new thing. This is definitely the thing. 
do you know that I spent probably a good three or four years of my entrepreneurial journey online, this is like 10 years ago, where I would continually say <laughs> to my, I'm laughing at the comments, where I would continually say to my friends and mentors at the time, I, pro- I no, I, I did about 10 years prior to that saying it to my family, sorry, excuse me. I promise that this is really the thing, you guys. I promise that this is the thing. This is the thing. This is the thing. Do you know I had so much shame throughout my entire 20s and a good chunk of my 30s and sometimes that, you know, um, that unwelcome, ungodly guest pops up where it absolutely should not be even still to this day to tell me, you still haven't done it right. You still haven't followed through properly. You're not choosing right. If you were really whatever, then you would have whatever. People think such and such about you. I mean, I have danced with that for decades now, so I will say I see it for what it is pretty easily and I just speak authority in the name of Jesus over myself and I'm just not even, I'm just not even, I'm not even about any part of that life. I'm not even going to entertain it. I might for a moment and then I know my scripture and i got the Holy Spirit in me and I will just start marching around my own kitchen and if I have no words even coming through, because there's all this condemnation and self-attacking going on in the inside about how I should be more proper, more on track, more organised, and, you know, just decide, am I a prophet who's in ministry or am I, you know, called for the unapologetically extra too much woman, which is it, it can't be both. But actually, as God said to me, who do you think made you that way in the first place? Who gave you those dreams and visions? He'll, you know, he says, I'll sort out how it all works. So when I've got that internal just condemnation going on, If I have no other words to say, I will literally just start saying, I speak life, I speak life, I speak life, I speak the name of Jesus over myself. I speak Jesus, Jesus, Jesus over my mind, over my heart, over my emotions, over my imagination. I speak life, I speak life, I speak life. And when you start to do that as a child of God, you will feel the Holy Spirit rising within you. Because you know what, if you're going to listen to the voices of the world or your own um you know, soulish condemnation and carry on and dramatics, which let's face it, can be kind of entertaining at times for ourselves and others, but not a good idea to put them in charge. If you're going to listen to your own soulish dramatics or the voices of the world, and you're going to come into agreement with that on repeat, which we do by perpetuating it or also by acting on it, Holy Spirit in you, he's going to step down. He's going to be suppressed bit by bit more and more so over time if he's in your spirit. If you're a child of God, you have the Holy Spirit in your spirit. Is he leading? If you're not a child of God and you're like, hang on, I want the greatest power and authority in and through me and I want to walk fully in the destiny plan of what I was made for and I want to see the days that were already ordained for me, you say with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and declare him to be your saviour and that is a faith move and whatever questions you need to answer, God doesn't mind about your questions. You know, doubt is a gateway into your faith. So don't be afraid about your questions. Dear me, your questions. I, I got time for your questions, always. God's got time for your questions, right? But at a certain point, you take a faith move and you simply believe in your heart and declare with your mouth, I don't want to do this thing by myself. I am misaligned. <laughs> and that is putting it mildly if I do it by myself. So Lord, I'm putting you in charge. You receive the Holy Spirit in your spirit, the greatest power and authority on this earth. You now have supernatural guidance of the highest order. There is plenty of supernatural guidance that you can receive. Off you go. Go and find it. I don't recommend it. I have all those t-shirts too. It's a dangerous pathway. False light. You know that you're on the wrong path because you're still looking. That's how you know. You're not there yet. You're not done. You're always looking. There's always another journey or ceremony or shadow work or breakdown or breakthrough or modality. That's how you know you're not done. Jesus died. He said it is finished because it's finished. That's how you know you have the real deal because you just have a peace and a contentment and a certainty and a knowing that surpasses all understanding. And you now have the Holy Spirit in you, leading, guiding you, showing you, and you literally are a citizen of heaven and you're simply commanding this realm. I mean, that's kind of cool in accordance with God's rule, you know, in accordance with his will and way through you, but he's the one who's showing it through you. So it's really a wonderful thing. I, I think it's very strange to choose um, an alternative spiritual path. Very curious. I don't know why you would do this since it all ends in destruction, but you do you, boo. So anyhow, let's say you have the Holy Spirit in you. 
That doesn't mean that he's going to just puppeteer you into your destiny path. We're not puppets. So you're either going to act on the fact that supernaturally your position as a child of God is that you are led by the Spirit of God. This is your supernatural position. From the very first moment that you receive Jesus, you accept him as Lord and failure, uh, Lord and Saviour, Excuse me. you turn from your own failures and ways and you say, I am misaligned. I no longer want to be in charge of this whole thing because I tried that and it was messy. Entertaining maybe for others, but not ideal. So now you have the Holy Spirit. Your position instantly is that he leads and guides you. Romans 8.14 says, as many as are the children of God, so too are led by the Spirit of God. He will show you the way. Go read the entirety of the book of Galatians, Ephesians. Just go read the entirety of the entirety of the entire book. Um, but you need to be choosing that. And you've got to proclaim it over yourself. Now, the beautiful thing is God is correcting you from the inside out all of the time, all the whole entire time. So, you know, you think you're wandering off path. He's like his hand is just carrying you wherever it is that you're going. But one thing, and I'm, you know me, I'm just like, I have a, a lot of thoughts coming through me all at once right now that I want to say to you. And I, I actually cannot talk for long. I have a client call. So you're going to get me for a couple more minutes and then we're on our way. I could easily keep going for two hours. It's not that day today. So let, let's hear this. Receive this. We, as the too much women, we have this thing where we continually question every single part of who we are. We get one part into mad certainty and flow and excitement and enthusiasm. And then if you're me, you just start telling the whole world about it. And then the next day you question it and you think you've got to come up with a whole new vision. And you're perpetually looking for when am I going to get it right and when am I going to be right? And a lot of this time, this, a lot of the time this comes from, well, it can come even generationally, right? It's not even directly from some authority figure in your actual physical life. It could be from before that. But it comes from wherever it comes from. And just like God has a plan for your destiny, the devil has a plan for your destiny too. And so what he does with those who are called to lead and to pour for the thing and who are made by the Lord to be the unapologetic too much woman is he tries to turn that against you. You're too much. You're too all over the place. You're crazy. You're disorganized. You're messy. Why haven't you settled down yet? Why can't you choose? Why aren't you there yet? Why hasn't it grown more? If you were really whatever, then you would have whatever. I spent my whole 20s, I mean, I was like happy and, and excited and proud for different things that I was doing on the one hand. But then on the other hand, I was always apologizing because I would always come up with new ideas and new businesses. Do you know, I tried to start a chocolate business with my friend when I was about 27 and I can't even remember the name of it, but it was some French name that we came up with. And we spent so much money, like literally trying to figure out like food production laws and that kind of a thing. We spent so much money on this and so many meetings. And then one day I just woke up and I was like, I don't feel it anymore. I just don't feel it anymore. I don't want to do it. Um, Jane, I see you on my live stream and I know I'm going to call you in one minute. How about, how about we do that call in five minutes? Is that okay? We can text Jane and ask her. Uh, you <laughs> okay, if we start five late. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap right now. That's what's going to happen doesn't matter. I've always got more to say and I can always stop at any moment in time. So I would do that all the time though. The amount of different business ventures I embarked upon where I would spend so much money and time on it. Three of my friends and I had this business that we called Can You Handle It? I think the website might still be there. Canyouhandleit.com. I don't even want to look that up. Oh, she said, take your time. Everybody send a love heart shower and just speak blessings in favor of the Lord over Jane. We just speak that anyhow over every person here, over every person here. I just proclaim blessings in favor of the Lord. My elbow just fell off the table. All right, we're going to finish a few thoughts here though. And then you're getting the super flow version of me straight into our call. I'm already prepped. So I would spend so much money and time on all these things and I so believed it and I'm very influential. I don't know if you notice. So I would always influence my friends into it. I was the one that was high on my own internal su super flow supply. But to be fair, I had a lot of friends who are the same kind of a crazy. So, you know, we can all take responsibility for that. But I would inevitably wake up one morning and I would have this sinking feeling and I'd be like, I'm not going to do it anymore. And I felt so bad. And I spent at least 10 years shaming myself and more time even before that because, you know, I was doing stuff since I was three years old entrepreneurially. A lot of it made a lot of money. 
But I did some crazy stuff, you guys. One time I opted into this pyramid scheme where you had to send $20 in the mail and then you had to mail out like 2,000 letters. This is like the post, you know? And then you had to mail out these like printed, so I had to print all the letters, mail all the letters. I was about 16, 17. Um, I did this completely without authority of my parents, obviously. It cost a lot of money. I had money because I was doing network marketing and I was an Avon lady when I was 11 and sometimes I would make a thousand dollars a week and I was also running clubs since I was eight years old and charging people to join my clubs and make you do a weird initiation dance in a good way and then we would have bake sales and make the money and then I would always give the money back into the club and we'd have a sleepover and that kind of a thing but I had money um I always figured out how to make money and I think by that time I had a part-time job as well at Sizzler <laughs> and maybe in the health food store at the same time so I spent I think like three or four grand though printing and mailing letters and I got a post office box. I don't even know how I got a post office box at an under 18 years old age, but I did and mailed out all these letters. And I was convinced I was going to make $20,000 in return because if everyone would just put $20 in the mail and send it back, then you're going to make all that money, right? I did it. I sent my $20. I made it $80. I took the handle off my bedroom on the inside of the door. Cause remember when you were growing up and you didn't have a lock on your bedroom door, so you could lock your bedroom door from your crazy siblings or your parents that might get, you know, wind of the fact that you had somehow spent four grand printing and mailing letters in a pyramid scheme and you just unscrew the whole door handle from the inside and then nobody can open it from the outside. Genius. Genius. Where there's a will, there's a way. So I did many things like that. I did another pyramid scheme where you put four grand in and you were supposed to get 16 grand out. And we actually, I went in with a friend though and her mum, her mum put two grand in. My friend and I each put a grand in. We got the 16 grand out. I got $4,000 and I was like blown away. I then spent two and a half grand of a, on, a, on a plane ticket for my best friend from Germany because I grew up in Germany in my teens and I bought her a plane ticket for her to come and stay with me for three months in Australia, which was so cool. And I'm still so glad that I did that. I don't know what happened with the rest of it. I probably bought a whole bunch of shoes. So we've always been the too much woman. Well, uh, not Bobby, <laughs> not whichever other guys are watching this. But you've always been the too much person, right? The creators, the dreamers, God made us that way for a way. My, many people in my space, whether or not you're aware of this about yourself, are prophetic. I attract a lot of prophetic people into my space. A lot of seers as well. I don't know if that's you. I'm a seer. I'm a prophet of the Lord. I see things. I discern things. I know things. I have a vision that goes beyond the physical realm. I've certainly spent many times making that bad or wrong. And I've certainly spent many lost years wandering off other paths. Thank the Lord that he had me in his hand like a roller coaster of madness the whole time. And now here we are. And then I finally started to understand this is a good thing and a God thing. And today I want to just impart to you, and I'm going to wrap it with this. I just want to impart to you that the parts of you that you've maybe for decades apologized for or made bad or wrong. I want to say to you right now, and I want to speak this life over every single person here, and I hope you receive this regardless of your beliefs. I want to say the parts of you that you've made bad or wrong are a good thing, and I believe they're a God thing. And right now, I just speak over each person here, a coming forth, a rising up, a coming to fruition, and an overflow of right identity. And I'm prophesying right now over whoever it's for. You don't have to receive it. You can receive, not from me, from the Lord. You can say yes, or you can say not for me. That's your choice, right? But over every person for whom it's for, I'm prophesying an instantaneous overflow, a rising up of right identity that results in right moves being made. I'm speaking over your creativity. I'm speaking over your writing. I'm speaking over your songwriting. I'm speaking over your poetry. I'm speaking over your singing. I'm speaking over your speaking. I'm speaking over books, podcasts, and I'm speaking over who? I feel this now for some people. You know if this is you. One or two of you, I already know that it's you. I don't know if it's the rest of you. I'm seeing, I'm speaking over right rooms that you're meant to walk into, where you're meant to be speaking life into and over rulers, kings, authorities, that kind of a thing. People who rule over maybe an industry, but I I really am seeing higher level than that. So I speak a right coming forth over hidden, suppressed, condemned and shamed parts of your God-given identity. And I say come forth in Jesus' name. 
Come forth, come out, rise up. And I throw to the ground and I speak against condemnation and shame that is not, not right, should not be there. And that is causing a muting, a muzzling and a silencing. And if you know that your voice and your expression, just, we're just in a thing right now. Um, if you know that your voice and that your expression is silenced or you suspect that it is, if you're receiving that right now, you can put your hand on your throat and you say, I speak life over my voice. I speak life over your voice. I speak life over your message. I say, voice come forth, rise up. I speak boldness, certainty, righteous authority being taken and that anything that is not right, not godly, will fall to the ground in Jesus' name. That's up to you whether or not you want to receive it, right? But I speak a confidence, a certainty, a clarity, a direction and a revelation of your supernatural gifts as you voice, voice, voice what you have been put on this earth to voice and you proclaim and you speak forth and you prophesy about a thing and you preach about a thing and you declare a thing and you decree a thing and I am speaking from God's favour, God's blessing, God's will. I am not trying to prophesy into life anything outside of the will of God. Okay? So if you're not walking as a child of God and you're receiving this, guess what might happen? Some topsy-turvy fun in your life. It'll be good. I'm here if you need me. Okay? So that's it. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to expect that because here's what is not true about biz strategy. It is not a thing that you're meant to figure out, dot an I and cross a T and, you know, studiously move forward, spending your life figuring out algorithms. I don't think that's what the, you know, seer of the Lord, the prophet of the Lord, the anointed, called, favoured daughter of the Lord is meant to be spending her life on unless she has a particular, you know, joy and righteous desire for understanding algorithms. So if that's you, that's what you should spend your time on. But if you're here to be a messenger and speak forth a thing, then I would suggest that you just speak life over that. And then allow God to be the one who's, you know, putting that effort in. That's it. I'm going to go. Jane and I are going to have our call now. Supernatural Creator Academy. Supernatural Creator Academy has just begun. The pre-work dropped yesterday. There is going to be the live module training toward the end of this week. So right now is the very best time to join me in this new 10-week live course if you've not already done so. You can check it out at thekatrinaruthshow.com forward slash Supernatural Creator Academy. This is no holds barred. It's time to stop walking both sides of a line that you're not even meant to be looking at and unleash the whirling, twirling, mayhem, mess and madness of whatever has been put in and through you. So what this is, is 10 full weeks together. It is live. It is all new. You will not be able to get away from me. And it is anointed. It is not me trying to make up things. I am also speaking from nearly 20 years of online business experience over $30 million made online, and I know one or two things about one or two things. So we'll talk about them. There's plenty I don't know, that's for sure. I don't know things that I don't want to know, and there's probably things that I do want to know that I don't yet know. But I'm going to be speaking straight to the heart of the you who you already know that you're meant to be. So my suggestion, go and read about that. You can do that at thekatrinaruthshow.com forward slash Supernatural Creator Academy. I'm going to drop a little link in the comments here on Facebook, and I'll do it afterwards on IG. And it's an unlocking. That's what it is. If you go look at that page, you're going to see that I say the step-by-step guide to making more money faster by being unapologetically and all the way extra you and finally unleashing the message and the work you're here to shake the world with. Well, there's a lot more to it than that, that's for sure. It's the unleashing of the way it was always meant to be. And it is the simultaneous letting go and stripping off of all these stupid made-up hoop-jumping rules that just do not apply. That's not an ego thing. That is a committedness to identity and truth sort of a thing. Go read it on the page. If you have a question, message me. Otherwise, we're kicking off module one in a few days. The group is now open, open, open. The pre-work is there for you waiting. Your place is waiting. You can jump in regularly. You can do payment plan. You can even do VIP if you like. My suggestion, read this page. The page is going to wake and shake you. I'm going to go. Thank you for being here. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what hit you. Let me know what you commit to. Have a beautiful rest of the day or evening. And do not forget, life is now. Press play.